Hello and welcome to another episode of Sonic Touch, episode 25 in fact. It's the show dedicated to music making on touch devices. I'm Nick Batt, editor of sonicstate.com. And I'm Gaz Williams, a, a musician and a producer. So, in recent months, together with the uh, announcement of the iPad 4, was what we'll call it, which is the, the most powerful one, mm. and also Audio Bus, there's been a sort of niche in the app market that's been fulfilled. Yes, that's effects real-time effects units, uh, which I think maybe the iPad, the older versions of the iPad didn't maybe have enough hoof to do that, but we're seeing some quite decent, quite high sort of quality, studio quality, studio quality so, so effects units uh, coming out in the form of a iPad app. So what are we looking at first? We've got a, an array here, right? Yeah, well, um, Chimatica have brought out a few very simple effects. They do like a reverb so far and a delay. The reverb is called space and the delay is called dub. Now these are quite straightforward. Now we'll have a look at the reverb one first. And very dark it's a, it's interface. It's just some faders. <laughs> Pretty much. And in many ways that's what's quite appealing about it because it's a very straightforward thing to use. Uh, in terms of what it can do is it, it can take a, an input, process of the reverb, and give it the output, and so, more or less, that's it. Uh, if we have a look here, we can assign MIDI uh, MIDI controls to everything. So the, all these faders here can be MIDI controls. Yes. Well, right. Okay. Uh, there's an output limiter, but that adds some latency. So we've got that switched off at the moment, and with some presets. So we'll bring in a preset. Let's say a ah, huge space sounds good to me. And what we'll do to demonstrate this is uh, we'll bring a guitar. Okay. And we're plugged in via uh, an Apogee Jam. Apogee Jam right here. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, PV Jerry Donahue uh, Omniac, which is actually a lovely mm -hmm. guitar. So if you want to try playing some of the controls there, because I just play some chords. I'm just messing with the mix now. Oh, that one doesn't like it. And hey, that's the scale, so that... So you take the room size down, add a bit of pre-delay, oh we've got some filtering. Including resonance on... Oh, on the high pass and the low pass. Yeah, which can really kind of colour the sound of the reverb. I guess with a bit of modulation that would be kind of cool. It's quite an ambient sound, isn't it? I mean, why would a reverb not be? But it's it's less algorithmic. It's kind of one big. It seems like it's to me. It seems like it's all based on the single algorithm. Hence the scale control. The scale control is just scaling the, the, the multi, like a multiplier. Yeah. So if we were to um, crank up the scale and crank up the room size to get the sort of the biggest reverbs, a little bit hot. Take some of those resonance down oh, as well. Oh yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> sucker for resonance. And it's very ambient. It's lovely, isn't it? It's it is real. nice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And to be able to, to filter the reverb tail is... And I'm guessing if you can um, MIDI control some of those, you can get some quite... You could get some modulation effects. Maybe you could run like a MIDI sequencer in the background and have that triggering the sending control values, all sorts of things you could do. That's a great idea. Hey, <laughs> you can have that for nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, so pretty much quite simple, you know. So it hasn't got lots of modelled rooms, or you know, it hasn't got any right. uh, convolution impulses or anything. So it's relatively straightforward. I know it's got a record button here, so it'll record. <laughs> it'll just be just a basic record the output, uh, okay. which you know could be quite nice. Useful. And, uh, very dimly here, mm. I don't know if this will pick up on the screen, there's the DSP, uh, this is a long reverb, uh, DSP 17, 16, 17%. Take that resonance down a bit. So that's actually quite useful, I think, for, for seeing. That's something you don't really see CPU meters on that stuff. No, you? and also that bodes well for use in Audiobus then. Uh, so if we look at Audiobus and we can see how we could insert this into the chain of Audiobus. So as with every time you use Audiobus, always start from nothing. Nothing. So so when you double click, there's nothing here. Close any apps. Always start Audiobus first. So if we go into Audiobus 
Now, when Algebras first came out, there was very few things that actually could occupy this middle slot here. So I'm going to choose my input, and I'm just going to select it to be microphone input, but in this case, obviously, it's the Apogee Jam. And the output, I'm just going to set it to be speaker output, and then in the middle now, we'll that now put our and space. You launch it from within. From within. Right. And, and there we are. We can see with the flashing chevrons that the audio signal is coming through. And there it is. Now, if we see it, and we can see that the DSP is still reading the same. Right. Oh, it's gone up to 19. So maybe Audiobus is putting a little more load on it. It's worth mentioning that also we're running this on the iPad 2. Um, Primarily because uh, with the iPad 4, which we've got, we haven't got an actual dedicated audio input. Um, so that's why we're doing it. But I, I, we yep. did try this, just running it, and it works at roughly 5% less, isn't it? So, so for this is 15-16%, uh, on the iPad 4 it was 10-11% mm. CPU. So like, as we know with Audiobus now, right, I can go to the output, for instance, and I could change the output and put in Cubasis or, you know, Garage band. Why don't you put dub? Because then we can look at dub as well, eh? Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's get dub in. So this is also by Chromatica, and you'll see it's got the same layout as space with a few different parameters. If we go to the menu, the same options that so we've got, the same MIDI controls. Uh, 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 but this now is all about a delay. So just let's mute the reverb. So just jump back here and um, let's just take that out for now. Now, what's quite nice about this is it's got tape noise, which just is puts like a, a hiss. Yes, I can hear that hiss. Yeah. That's funny, isn't it? We're, now, we're digital so clear, we actually want to reintroduce yeah. noise. That's bizarre, isn't it? Well, this is kind of, because part of the design ethos of this is to try and simulate the kind of reverbs that we used in, in dub reggae and that kind of thing, so, right. which are quite noisy traditionally. So, And also you've got your warble rate and warble amount. Again, things which weren't necessarily desirable, but... So let's well, We can get some chorusy effects and something weird. Again, yeah. this feels very kind of ambient and floaty, which, I, you know, it appeals to me, but so if you're looking for something yeah. sort of tight and clean, it might be a little less, something more gentle and more. Okay. Yeah. And you can hear in the tails there. Yeah, the, the low-pass filter, the low -pass filter is yeah. kicking in, so it's regeneration. Ooh, a bit of ping-pong. It's nice, again, what's this? This is 14, 15% DSP. So, you know, and we, we are going through audio bus. What's the latency feel like on the round trip? I mean... It doesn't feel too bad, but if we look, jump back to audio bus, if we look now that we can adjust the buffer size in audio bus, and I'm running it at the lowest buffer, right. which you can run if you're on running this machine, it on yeah. this machine, 256 frames. Uh, now, if I was getting kind of noise and crackle, I could increase just, that, yeah. but uh, that would obviously affect the, okay. the playability. But so really, and also the only other thing about this is obviously from an external input, we're having a processing a mono signal. We're not getting any stereo processing, right? That's right, and that is one of the limitations still, if you were to use the iPad as an effect unit, that, and if you were coming in via the headphone jack, uh, or like this. Let's turn that noise down. We're still, yes. We're dealing with, we're dealing with mono in, stereo out. Right. So unless you're using specifically an audio interface that's got stereo in, you're gonna find that a hurdle okay. as a dedicated effects unit. Okay. So. So we can see that, well, let's just bring the, we'll, we'll bring space in and we'll put that in. So we can have a real ambient uh, fest yeah. here. Okay. Probably would swap the order around, really have it's the, the sort of thing that you, yeah, it's, going in. It's the sort of thing you do when you buy your two, first two Boss uh, effects pedals, your reverb and your delay, you just, this is the kind of sound you can get, but it's actually, it's got a slight lexicon-y vibe to it, hasn't it? It's got that real thick ambient quality. Yeah, so 
pretty good effects, as I say, very simple, easy to operate, and you're not dealing with trying to adjust virtual. But also, if you had a if you had a MIDI controller, you could automate some of those things as well. So yeah. that's another a good thing. Absolutely. Um, so that's available from Chimatica, yes. Uh, these are priced at uh, $3.99 each, so it's going to be around $2.50. So it's a you know, good affordable effect and you know sounds decent enough. And there are more coming. There's a little slot on the, the home page which with the question mark coming next. So he's obviously got some more things planned. Um, but there are other alternatives, right? Yes, so we've looked at effectively quite simple effects now. What we'll do now is we'll look at the other end of the spectrum and we'll look at one of the most complex standalone effects units that's currently out on the iPad next, and that is? Sugar Bites Tornado. What we'll do, let's just close everything off again. So we'll jump, we'll bring in Tornado. Uh, I think probably the easiest way to explain Tornado is it's almost like a chaos pad. Yeah, it's really multi-effects, isn't it? Yeah, but with the multi-effects. Now, speaking about the Chaos Pad, when will the Chaos Pad, when will Korg actually port the Chaos Pad? Well, I'm guessing, you know, the issues probably for them is real-time processing speed and audio interface. You know, when that becomes more widely available, I'd imagine it would be something they could do. But, mm. I mean, you know, for the time being. So, well, if you're looking for a Chaos Pad or an type equivalent of type of thing. Trademark. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly, uh, and all of those other things. <laughs> then, then Tornado is probably worth a look. So, if we take an overview of Tornado, we can see that we've effectively got four Chaos Pad type like touchpad, X Y X Y pads. But what's going on? You need to press this button here to see what's going on here. Okay. Wow, it's like a pedal board, isn't it? It's like eight yeah. effects. Now, what we notice is that we've got eight effect slots. And we've got a choice of 24 different effects which could then go into the slots. And we just click on them and we drag and we can drop them into a slot such as that. Now there's a little edit button. If I touch the edit button. Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Wow. And that so, sort of reminds me a little like the uh, old Filter Queen and the, um, the ele remember. electrics stuff. Yeah, oh. electrics, yeah. Yeah. So yes. what you will notice, you might think, oh my gosh, look how small and fiddly that is. And it is quite small and fiddly, but if you double tap on a bit of space, it will actually, you know, you have got a bit of a zoom that. Right. So we've got you know. time, we've got LFOs, we've got envelopes of filters. Right. Well, wow. let's just explain one thing. For each of the effects of the 24 effects that we saw, they all have got a similar format in the, in the, dedic in the specific effects along this top section here, but all of them have the same type of, of modulators, modulators yeah. which is two LFOs and an envelope follower. And every control can be set, the LFO can be routed to every single control, well, both LFOs, and Right. Maybe what we should do is back up a bit and yes. listen to the complexity we can achieve. With okay. I'll prime play and you can... So we okay. better find a patch that we, we know is going to sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's... Uh, well, first thing, what we need to do is if we're using a live input like this, we need to jump into the settings. Oops. The way we do that is we, we touch here and we've got audio settings. And at the moment it's set to internal. Uh, but we're going to turn it to external audio. So you might miss that, so it's good to notice that that's there. Right. Adjustable buffer, down okay. as, as short as 64 samples. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah, so this iPad 2 might croak a little bit if we did that. We can test we'll that. We'll stay on 256. But we'll stay now. on 256. OK, so now I've got my input. Let's just, uh, th this red button here, that just resets. resets all. So there's my dry signal. Right, so. Okay. It's kind of fairly crazy. Oh, that's nice. A lot of these effects, I think, are going to be maybe more suited to time-based things, like drum machines. Yeah, well, we've got a tap tempo here that we can drop in. What does it look like we've got here? So that's a reverse delay. Uh, Bell and a reactor. Interesting. Yeah. So going back to that page, though, by using these, this is like turning up the effect amount. Right. When you jump back to this page, like that's turning up the effect level of of one. That's turning up effect level two or something like that. And then you could you say you've got to, yeah. So you can mix and match yeah. between them. So I'd recommend initially 
working within this page first to get a feel for to it. get a feel for it and even just working with just one effect at a time because you know they they can really sound quite messed up the sounds and yeah. uh, but to make it usable I would start quite simple and like in this case you see there is a guitar amp so we could just maybe start with a guitar amp drop that in there and apply a little bit of it and let's go into the edit mode okay just so if you want to drive drive and it's some Okay, so yep. we've got the, the game. It's and then, quite a nice sounding, actually. It almost sounds like a blackface, isn't it? So. <laughs> well, you can see, so what happens now, we can turn on with these little, let's double tap to go in, and we can we can see these little plus and minuses. Wow, it's quite so, fiddly, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a bit fiddly, but you can see you can set a positive or a, or a negative. So we could modulate the drive or any of these parameters. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So, so yeah, let's try modulating the mid so we could get like an auto wah type of effect. So we would tap that now. Ah, uh, okay. So we can see how the mid is now. That's the envelope follower. Now, the rate is governed by here. This gives a shape to the LFO and like tap on wow, that. Wow, and my head is already beginning exactly. to start. This is one effect exactly. of a possible two. And, and that's just one of the four. LFO, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So you can imagine when you factor all of this in, we're looking at a very complex yeah. effect. Uh, so you can get really tweaky with it. Yes. In fact, one thing that I did notice when we go into the presets, uh, which yes. I think are, uh, if I double tap out again, are here. Mm -hmm. uh, These are oh, presets for the guitar amp. For the guitar, oh, okay, right. Yes. So where am I looking? I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost. So uh, yeah. There's no, on the live input, there's no presets ah, okay. for the whole thing. But th there are a bunch of presets that have been made by Beardy Man, who is a very famous beat right. producer, does loads and loads of crazy stuff. So. so what we'll do is we'll swap the audio engine over and we'll set it to the internal player. When we go there then, now we've got here a bunch of presets which are... Um, which will give well, these us... Are audio, um, these are audio uh, loops, actually, aren't they? So, so, yes, yeah, so audio loops. Um, so we bring a loop in. Uh, okay, so All right, let's just play that and see what that sounds like. I'm going to reset that so we can hear it. Okay, have a play with the... Reverb there. I think I've just turned into Skrillex. <laughs> but by the same token, that could be an audio bus feed from a virtual instrument or a DAW or any exactly. kind of thing. So, exactly. I mean, you could use this as part of a performance aspect. So if you're running backing tracks, for instance, I, I don't know whether, I mean, I don't know if audio bus would allow, this what would be neat is you need multiple audio bus paths. So you've got a clean feed, which mm. has not been affected, and then one is, so you can just kind of drive, send things off, that would be kind of cool, but perhaps for another, yes. <laughs> another version of the iPad. Yeah, um, but we can see then, that, so this, when you heard the effects there, there was all kinds of crazy stuff going on. So you could have a look at what's going on in this particular preset, we could jump back here, we could um, we can come out of this mode here, and we can see. So we got like destructive there, gentle HP. So I guess high pass, cl cloud maker. These are just the names of things. But when you were to have a look at them, like the cloud maker is obviously like a reverb. Like, yeah, is yeah, the yeah. reverb and um, wow, look at that. That's a, that's a heck of a modulation, random yeah. step sequence. Yes. So, but you can hear when you're playing with it that way. And present this is tempo synced to the, the loop, so that's why it was all sort of, yeah. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, but if you are inclined to delve in and to start playing with all these LFOs and, and, and with all these shapes and the different things that you can do, it's an infinite effect. Well, I suppose the thing is having that level of control, if you wanted to work on, uh, say, a, 
a live aspect rather than a piped music from internal or something that's internal you kind of want all that beat sync and tempo sync and that's something that doesn't kind of get recalled with patches so you have to be it's a bit more fiddly mm. unless you had midi clock and stuff coming in from, yes. from those as well yes which we can set that up so if we go in here and we go into midi and we go into virtual input we can turn on Clock, ah, right. sync. clock sync, yeah. uh, channel we, sync. Yeah. Oh, there's quite a lot of presets in here. So we've got recording, zoom. Um, we've mm -hmm. also got the network session, so that would work over Wi-Fi. Yes. And we can send outputs over network session or any other MIDI hardware. Yes. That's quite common. So we MIDI. could, I suppose we could use LFO and steps to kind of transmit to some other stuff. So mm. that's quite interesting. There's an awful lot you could do there then. Absolutely. So it, as you say, it, it is a complex and involving... I would say really complex, <laughs> but kind of quite... Yeah. But, but you can see from the front end here, though, just four pads, just very simple. So simple sort of front end, delve in a lot of complexity under the hood. Absolutely. So uh, it's from Sugar Bites. It's uh, it's not it's a kind of premium effect. So it's uh, 1999 uh, US dollars, uh, which I'm guessing is probably going to be around 15 ish, 16 pounds. I yeah, think. 16. Some, some that's 15, 16 quid. Yeah. Um, but it gives you a heck of a lot to play with, a lot to think of. If you were looking, maybe, it'd be like taking a good book on holiday, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let me think of this as like sort of Anna Karenina of apps. <laughs> and then you would get in there and start delving away. It would it yeah. sort of keep you busy for a while, Definitely. I and And I, I kind of wanted a show with the guitar in a way because I think mainly Tornado may appeal more to sort of DJ type effects and that kind of thing, but it's no by no means limited to that. And I think if you were, you know, I mean, there are great guitar amp simulators and, yeah, and they've got all the pedals. Yeah. But if you kind of feel that that's kind of just limiting, then this would definitely, you know, blow open your I'm options. guessing if you have the right audio interface with this, you could use this on bus effects. You could use them, you know, maybe hooked up with a K oscillator or a chaos pad or some other products that for real time play, yeah. you could get some pretty cool stuff happening. Yeah. While Gaz takes his guitar off, uh, we also, while he's been on his travels touring around the world as a professional musician, <laughs> uh, you spotted a couple of nice bits of hardware, right? Yeah, I, I, I got this fantastic mic stand mount, which I got in Japan, but it is available everywhere, um, which is uh, made by Hercules, and it's and it's got some nice functions. Let's have a look. Uh, let's bring it on. Okay. It looks very much like one of these kind of DVD holders. So if we take, maybe if we take it off here, let's have a look. So, ah, uh, so you got like a, um, yeah, a ratcheted yeah. clamp. This presumably means that it fits, one size fits all. It, absolutely. So I think you could probably use other tablets as well in it, um, but certainly, <gasps> other tablets. <laughs> tablets, but certainly iPad 1s, iPad 2s, and, and it's a great fast release as well, so rather than having to fiddle around getting things in and out, you, you know, it does go on, on and off very quickly. So what happened, we've got a ball joint mount ball here. Ball joint, which uh, which I think is makes a lot of sense, so if we, we just... get it under here put, a bit, we can probably have a look. Oh, right, so. okay. Okay, so this, this is the... Oh gosh, you can get it really tight. It's good, yeah. solid plastic, so you can yeah. tighten this up. Jesus, you're much stronger than me. <laughs> well, yeah. So they um... <laughs> <laughs> we can't get it off. No, um, it's, it's a very, very solid release. Yeah, it's a very, okay. very sturdy mount. So ah, okay. So then you can articulate it in any way. That's right. So you get plenty of plenty of adjustability. So let's just pop that back on the stand a minute, and uh, it's got. Hercules make guitar stands. I've got a number of their stands and I really do like them. They have and it's got this kind of nylonized plastic, so it's not a sort of cheapo piece of plastic. No. So that goes Here, why on. Why don't you use uh, my iPad? Then okay. You can leave that. So we'll put that in there. This so. so in it goes, slam it shut, and then just flip the lever. Now, it's loose in the ball joint at the moment, uh, but we can sort of tighten it up. Not quite as tight as before. <laughs> and... But one of the advantages with this one, which I, which I quite liked, was that, you know, you can just, by slackening the ball joint, you can very quickly, turn very, it. very quickly orient it. And it's not going to fall out of uh, any orientation either. No, yeah. exactly. So, as I say, this is a company who, who makes musical instrument stands, so they know a thing or two about this. And I, I just thought this was very neat. And there was another part that came with it, which is... Uh, All right, so that would screw onto the board, so that yeah. gives you the opportunity to stand it up, presumably. Yeah, so if we just whipped it off here and then popped it out of its... the ball uh, joint. 
Stick that in on there. there, and then. And you have to take this little piece, clip this what, What's bit that off. for, that oh, tiny piece of losable plastic? And this tiny bit of losable plastic is for, well, let's say if we were stood like that, but then if we wanted to do it in portrait. Ah, that's an extra leg. That sounded like something, oh, we've forgotten in the design phase. <laughs> All right, but, yeah. okay, well, that's neat enough, isn't it? I think so. I mean, and again, it's got this nice quality to it. And what I found, you can set the resistance up in such so a way. So you can actually still move it a little bit. Yeah, you can move it, but then when you've got the angle that you want, if you tighten it up, it's, it just holds. Yeah, so when you're playing, and sometimes I've found when I've been playing on some instruments, you know, it just slides around everywhere. Or Okay. And this seems pretty good. Right, so this is the Hercules, what's it called? Well, I think it's a Hercules iPad stand. And it, uh, we've seen it for about, uh, it's about 28 quid, 29 quid. Yeah, um, I guess 30 odd dollars. 30, 30, for, yeah, it's probably mm. much cheaper in the States. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's useful. Yeah. But mm. there's something else as well, right? Yeah, now, these, there's a speaker. It's just like a mono speaker, but you can get, you can get other ones. I'm liking the luggage already. Gang them together and make them into stereo. But as a mono speaker, this is a fabulous little speaker. It's got, it's got a battery inside it and the battery will last for 50 hours. So I'll just move that. So that's actually really significant battery life. But why I like it and why I thought it was worth mentioning, this is, well, it's actually made in Bristol, which is cool. Just down the road. Just down the road. But also the guys who've designed it uh, made sound systems, PA systems, so they kind of come more from that real sort of beefy kind of yeah. take your head off. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you were looking for a speaker, just a single speaker to plug into, I think this one's a good one because there's no signal processing on it at all. So a lot of these small so it's got speakers, like a class D amp in it and a and a that's right. A, but it does have an analog limiter in it as well, and it has a low gain and a high gain input. That's a low gain and a yeah, it's a low gain and a high gain. This is the power. This is a power jack in the middle here. Now, what's quite clever about this is if we're plugged into the low gain input here, then the high gain acts as a link, and then it becomes it passes a stereo signal across. Um, and then if we came out and went into the high gain input, then similarly it then makes the low gain input passes to stereo. Oh, neat. Yeah, which is nice. And we got a nice uh, green LED on there. Now that LED changes color depending on battery. So it starts off uh, like a kind of turquoise, it goes to green and then eventually goes to like an orange and a red. So you... How long does it take to charge? Uh, Just you do it overnight, I suppose. Yeah, I don't think it takes that long. It's a few hours, but then as I say, you get like 50 hours battery life. So... Awesome. You know, which is great, isn't it? For traveling. So the low gain input is quite good to use because you've got lots of headroom there. So if you're using lots of resonance and lots of kind of spiky stuff, you just kind of okay. just gives you a little bit more room to play with. Uh, no volume controls on it, so everything is going to be controlled coming from the iPad. And at this point in time, no Wi-Fi, no wireless right. connectivity. Right, so it's a wired speaker. Okay. It's a wired speaker. But right now, for musical purposes, you know. You're gonna We've got to listen it. to it. Let's see how you're gonna is. you're gonna need it wired. Um, okay, so you've got a cable there. Why don't yep. we use the iPad here that we've got? I switch this into. So, why don't you load up Thor? Ah, oh, that we looked at last time. Yep. Yeah. Put that in. Okay. Um, oh, we put that in the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, that'll teach us right. Well, we'll just get it out of here. That, that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Fortunately, it's a very quick release type of affair. So, yeah. right. So. There we go. So uh, pop it in there. In the headphone jack. Oh my goodness. That's, That's probably because you've got effects open in the, in the background. Ah, yes it is. <laughs> Turn that off. <laughs> right. I like Live that. and direct. <laughs> wow, that's pretty loud actually, isn't it? Yeah, we're in the low gain input at the moment. That's pretty beefy, actually. It does sound kind of fairly massive. Let's swap the... Okay. And we'll go into the high gain then. So you could use it kind of busk... Okay. Oh, that's starting to clip on input, right. Yeah. 
So that's why having that, that's why I thought it was really cool from a... a so you presumably could use this for like busking, I suppose, that kind of thing, yeah? Oh yeah. I mean, it is, it is pretty loud. Let's see if I can get some sort of sequence thing going on. This Nice. If you turn, yeah, turn your volume up. How big is that? And that's a t that's pretty it's small, isn't three it? Oh yeah, if I, if I put my finger on here, I can feel the whole thing kind of <laughs> vibrating, so. But as I say, because the people who make it are from that sort of PA background, you know, I think that the design is kind of, it, it, it means it's a little bit more like a... It feels beautiful, it's very sort of, solidly built. And yeah. Sort of heavy duty, it seems like you yeah. could drop it a few times and it wouldn't really have a problem. Yeah, I reckon it's pretty tough. So, uh, how much though? It looks like it might not be the cheapest thing in the world. Not the cheapest thing, it's about a hundred pounds. Right, okay. Um, and of course, so if you wanted two for stereo. That's quite a chunk of change, yeah. But actually that's quite, well I suppose it's the similar price for if you've got like a Bluetooth stereo speaker, that they're, they're on reasonable power, yep. they're around about a couple of hundred quid, aren't they? Yes, but in my experience, they just, when you plug synthesizers into those things, they just, they don't like the kind of nasty... And I have to say that the thing about Bluetooth I found, because I was checking some mixes at home, and we've got like a little um, Bluetooth speaker system, and if I was, I was on 48 uh, kilohertz, 48K um, sample rate, and I was getting real timing issues, so I was playing, and the song was kind of going... Da, 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 and it just the stability of the audio was really out, and I wasn't very yeah. far away from it. So I'm not, I'm still not convinced that Bluetooth is the uh, mm. the perfect vehicle. No, for... I, no I, I agree. I think uh, so. I think, as I say, right now, if you want to use your iPad as a musical instrument and you want to plug a speaker in, then something like this, a wired option, is really the only option, really. Yeah. Otherwise... <laughs> <Hey. laughs> and the other thing to be said, I mean, although this is a beautiful thing, you can yeah. get uh, Roland do some Cube stuff, which is yeah. very small and compact and battery powered as well. Yeah. It has a bit of extra stuff yeah. in terms of DSP. More yeah. geared to guitars, but they do yeah. busking amps for keyboards as well, which yeah. have a wider range, so they might be looking at yeah. perhaps a bit more expensive than yeah. that. But, but... Uh, yeah, uh, it's sort of, um, as I say, I think, I think that's quite a nice. It's I a beautiful thing. Nice. It's gonna look like a can of dog food. <laughs> or yeah. shoot. No, I tell you what that reminds me of a little bit. It's about the size of a steam pudding <laughs> tin. Anyway, right. so that's the mini rig. Yep. Uh, you can buy it online pretty much all great outlets, I'm guessing. They do it in a different a few different colours now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, no, you you do have to buy it from specific places. Okay. So if you look online, we'll put the We'll, we'll put, put a link, link in, in. Okay. Uh, because they're only a small company, so I think mostly direct orders and things. Uh, and, and, and there are a few other web-based okay. distributors who are doing it. Right, so uh, that's another episode of Sonic Touch, episode 25. I want to thank you for watching again. Uh, as ever, we appreciate your comments. Um, leave them below, and we really do appreciate them. They? It helps us with all sorts of things, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do actually enjoy the comments as well. Makes us feel loved and wanted, and hated <laughs> sometimes too, but we can live with that. So uh, that's it for episode 25. I've been Nick Back. And I'm Gaz Williams. Thanks for watching. See you later. <laughs>